Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope guys you are aware about our mobile application and you have already downloaded it yet. But those who haven't downloaded the mobile application as of now, please download it and explore the features on your own. Okay, because we have a lot on this application. Okay, so let's begin with the question number one. So where was the Gandhi Sagar floating festival, which is Asia's first floating festival organized? So the right answer is Mansour. So this is a place in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, and here we have organized this Gandhi Sagar floating festival. So we have shifted ourselves from the land to the waters. We have the floating solar power plants. We have the floating library for children. Okay. And now we have the floating festival. So this floating power plants, we have many floating solar power plants in India, but the largest one is of NTPC in Brahma Gundam. Okay. It is of 100 megawatt capacity in Raga, Brahma Gundam. So do remember this fact. And this library first floating library for children now this is launched by a state and which state is it this is your task first question of the day for all of you now moving to the news itself so the news is nothing much it is just that a festival was organized on the boat and this is called as the floating festival and this is the first time in asia that we are organizing such a festival okay the next question is General Atomics, a major American energy and defense corporation has started three significant projects in India in the field of artificial intelligence, drones and semiconductors. Which company has collaborated with the General Atomics for the next generation of technologies in the artificial intelligence? So here, let me clarify that with General Atomics, three Indian companies have collaborated for each of these fields. Okay, for AI, we have one com company. For semiconductors, we have another and for the other area that is drones, we have another company. Okay, so G General Atomics has partnered with three companies in it. So for the AI, which company is it? It is 114 AI. Okay, if you did not know the answer of this question, it was very easy to guess from the options itself because only this option has AI in its name. Okay, so this is the right answer. But this technique is... Uh, you can say this technique does not work all the times. Okay, you have to be careful, careful before deploying this technique of word association. Okay, now before moving ahead with anything else, I hope guys you are aware about the drones, the things which I taught you last week about the drones, like the green zones, yellow zones, red zone, and the usage of Kisan drones and the PLI scheme for the drones and uh, the benefit or the grant that the government gives to the farmers for purchasing the drones because all of these facts are important to understand the potential of the sector and the broader macro level uh, activities in the field of drones. Okay, so coming back to the news, General Atomics is a major American company. It has partnered with three companies for three different areas. First is Bharat Forge. So with this company, the General Atomics has partnered. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has partnered. And the basic purpose of it is to set up the aero structure manufacturing. Okay. For example, we have many big aircrafts in the Indian Air Force as well as the commercial aircrafts as, are also there. But we do not have that much of a manufacturing landscape that we can use to produce the engines and the components of the aircrafts in India itself. Therefore, the aerostructure manufacturing will be set up in India by the Bharat Forge in collaboration with this company. But at this moment, these two companies are going to conduct the feasibility study of setting up these structures, manufacturing units, and they will definitely plan out on setting up a manufacturing unit in India itself. But, but do pay attention to this fact that these companies have not announced any manufacturing unit yet. They have just collaborated to see the feasibility and viability of setting up the aerostructure manufacturing unit in India. Okay. Or rather, even if they would not set up any separate manufacturing unit, uh, unit 
इट माइट हैपन दैट द जनरल एटॉमिक वुड प्रोवाइड द मेंटरशिप टू द भारत फोर्स सो दैट इट कैन कंडक्ट द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ द एरोस्ट्रक्चर्स इन इंडिया इट्स सेल्फ ओनली ओके सो इट मे हैपन दैट टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर वुड टेक प्लेस नाउ द सेकेंड पार्टनरशिप इज with this indian ai company that is 114 ai and the general atomics and the field is artificial intelligence three rd tech this startup has partnered with general atomics for semiconductors okay now we are discussing about the semiconductor so i hope all of you are aware that taiwan has approximately 60% of the semiconductor market share in the world and next to taiwan is the south korea okay so semiconductor mein these two countries have the largest share in the market but the quantum of share which taiwan holds south korea is is not even next to it okay it has less than 1/5th of the total market whereas taiwan has 60% of the market and that is why taiwan has become a very strategic location for the us itself okay us we all know does not work until or unless its own purposes involved and if this island nation is uh, captured by china then it would be a very difficult situation for the entire world because then china would not only control the manufacturing sector of the world but it will also enter into the semiconductor sector and the semiconductors we all know where are they used in they are used in everywhere toys mein ho gaya tv ho gaya laptops mobile everywhere semiconductors are used okay so that is the thing Uh, and one more thing now we are talking about ta- taiwan and south korea so let me tell you that these two countries are also a part of a grouping which is called as asian tigers now asian tiger is not a grouping as such it is rather a name given to four countries in asia so taiwan south korea hong kong which is not a country in itself rather it is a special autonomous region of china but let's consider it as a country for that matter because we have to discuss the asian tigers so hong kong and singapore so these four countries in the asian region were given the tag of asian tigers because these countries were uh, growing very fast they were growing rapidly and because of that these countries were given the asian tigers tag okay so that was about the semiconductor market and we also know that india is also establishing a semiconductor manufacturing unit in vadodara gujarat okay so these are all the updates related to semiconductor now one more thing that a task force has been created by the us semiconductor industry association and india electronics semiconductor association and india semiconductor mission i hope you remember this india semiconductor mission it is a rupees 76000 crore initiative of the government okay which it announced to promote the semiconductor and its associated goods market in india so these three organizations basically it's a scheme so funding and assistance would be given under the scheme only or whatever would be the area of help that the scheme could provide that will be provided by the scheme only okay so these three entities will come together to develop a readiness assessment to identify the near term industry opportunities and facility uh, facilitate the longer term strategic development of the semiconductor ecosystem in india okay last but not the least general atomics general corporations ceo is vivek lal okay and he is a person of indian origin so that makes it all the more important next question uh, which has become the first merchant to accept the rbi's blockchain based cbdc in store so now i hope you remember last week only we discussed about the cbdc and here we are again at cbdc what we can do we have cbdc so much in the market because cbdc is the new trend and it's the new project on which rbi is working very diligently so it will happen that in the coming months also you will see major developments happening in cbdc ho sakta hai ki hum log bhi adopt kar le cbdc ko 
in the future now what is the right answer so the right answer is reliance retail okay so here we have two important news items related to the cbdc only first i'm going to tell you about the reliance retail news so reliance retail has become the first merchant to adopt the cbdc method so it will accept the digital rupee if you go to the reliance retail's store and buy some product and give the e rupee to the merchant okay but remember that reliance uh, retail owns many stores and right now this facility has not been launched on all the stores right now it is available on the fresh pick store okay then uh, in order to launch this facility at the fresh pick reliance retail has partnered with icici bank kotak mahindra bank and innovati technologies these three companies are in, uh, collaborating with reliance so that reliance can onboard on the cbdc plan the next news is that kotak mahindra bank has implemented the first phase of the rbs digital currency and the cities in which the kotak is launching this facility is mumbai delhi and ahmedabad okay so these were the two news now understand this point that rbi the supplier is ready to supply the e rupee then we have the payment gateway i hope you remember the news of last week cc avenue this is the payment gateway it is also providing the option of e rupee payment and now the customer is also going to be you going to use the cbdc for buying the goods at the merchant store so merchant is also accepting the cbdc so what is happening the ecosystem of cbdc is being created by the rbi and various other companies okay so that is the overview of the cbdc in india moving on to the next question so recently manola roka bote has been appointed as a first female pm of equatorial guinea uh, equatorial ki spelling mein mistake hai sorry for that so what is the capital of equatorial guinea now guys first of all i would like to apologize for the wrong pronunciation of this name but you need to understand that this country has spanish it has portuguese and it has french as its languages and the correct pronunciation of this name in either of these languages is not known by me and it is not even available on the youtube so i'm sorry if i have pronounced it wrongly but we don't have to do anything with the pronunciation we have to focus on the facts right so let's focus on the fact here and from now onwards i will call her miss bote okay so she has been appointed as the first female prime minister of equatorial guinea okay and what is the capital of this country so the current capital of this country is malab okay so the news is this much only that she has been appointed as the first pm of female pm of this country now there is a very interesting knowledge nugget for all of you so you must have heard about the guinea you must have heard about papua new guinea you must have heard about the equatorial guinea and guinea bissau so we have at least four countries with the same name okay so i don't know whether you knew this fact or not but from now onwards you know this fact right so in the world we have four countries with the same name that is guinea so guinea guinea bissau and the equatorial guinea these three countries are in the african continent only and papua new guinea is near australia okay so these three countries so this is equatorial guinea near gabon let me zoom it out so that you guys can see it better let me see yeah it's okay so this is guys equatorial guinea because it is near to the equator then we have guinea which is largest of these three guineas okay in area then we have guinea bissau which is this much of a land okay although it appears very small on the map but it is very large uh, on the ground okay now these three countries were once a colony of the european nations okay portuguese spain and french 
but papua new guinea was never a colony of the britishers or the europeans rather it was a colony of australia okay so it got its independence from australia in the year 1949 two years after our independence okay and right now this country is uh, considered a very important strategic con uh, country to go into the pacific and the oceania region okay that is something we will talk about talk about some other day but let's focus on these guineas only so the equatorial guinea got its independence from spain the guinea no only guinea got its independence from france then guinea bissau got its independence from portugal and papua new guinea got its independence from australia as far as the capital and currency of equatorial guinea is concerned so malabo is the current capital but it is developing its new capital and that is suadat de la paz okay now one more thing because we are talking about the capital so i remembered the news of andhra pradesh so andhra pradesh has recently announced visakhapatnam as its new capital so do remember that's a new recent development coming to the currency so central african franc is the currency okay so i remember that in 2020 or in 2021 i don't know the exact year but in one of these years a total of 8 countries of africa denounced this as their currency okay now you have to tell me that which were these 8 countries okay and it is a republic republic form of a government is there in Equ equatorial guinea and what is a republic form of government where the head of the state is chosen by the people through elections okay so that is a republic and here the head of the state is chosen whereas in democracy the head of the government is chosen okay for example thoda sa is pe discuss karte then we will move ahead because it's very very interesting so in republic we choose the head of the state and in democracy we choose the head of the government now iska sabse best example hoga uk because in uk we choose the prime minister not we but the citizens but they choose the prime minister and everyone in the uh, you can say in their parliament uh, who are the law okay so elections ke through the head of the government is chosen but the head of the state that is the monarchy is not elected it is rather hierarchical in nature whereas if we talk about the head of the state then us could be a better example because there the president is directly elected okay so that's the basic difference between a, a republic and a democratic and india is a sovereign democratic republic because here we choose the head of the government as well as the head of the state as well president ke bhi chunav hote hain and prime minister ke bhi chunav kiye jate hain okay and we have the elections even at the local level also panchayat mein bhi hote hain block district mein i mean panchayat pe bhi hote hain and then we have the municipal corporations as well which also work on the same phenomena of elections okay so this is the last question of the day what is the theme of the world wetlands day 2023 so revive and restore degraded wetlands is the theme february 2 is celebrated as the world wetlands day this is the theme and uh, i hope you remember that ramsar convention of 1971 is the convention on the conservation of wetlands okay so this convention was signed in 1971 in ramsar in iran that is why it is also called as the ramsar convention so my question from you is first question is how many wetlands from india are there in the ramsar convention and it has a montreux accord okay which is a special accord or a special list in which it puts only those wetlands which are almost at the uh, you can say verge of extinction or if you don't want to use the word extinction but they are on the verge of complete damage so they are very critical in uh, the environment but at the same time their damage is very much okay so those wetlands are put into this montreux accord now from india we have two sites in this accord you have to name those two sites okay so 
काफी अच्छा होमवर्क मिला है गैस आप लोगों को तो आई होप माई स्टूडेंट्स आर सिंसियर एंड दे विल डेफिनेटली प्रोवाइड दउ कमिंग टू द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वेटलैंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे आर कॉल्ड एज द किडनीज ऑफ द अर्थ वेर एज द एमेजॉन रेन फॉरेस्ट इज कॉल्ड एज द लंग्स ऑफ द अर्थ ओके नाउ वाई आर वी कॉलिंग इट एज द किडनी बिकॉज इट वर्क इट वर्क लाइक द किडनीज किडनीज work is to purify the blood right so it also purifies the water because uh, you know that these are the marshy lands which have the water accumulated on a specific land and they act like like the sponge okay so the nutrients the pollution the pollutants and the sediments which come from the heavy flow of water from the river those are accumulated in this land only okay so here in this manner they are just uh you can say they are accumulating the impurities and giving out the fresh water okay so that is the one thing it filters sediment pollutants and nutrients it its sponge like quality allows water to be returned to the ground during the dry period because it accumulates the water in the very thick layer of soil okay it is marshy and it is like sponge sponge mein kaise hota hai you don't get the water until you squeeze it है ना तभी बहुत सारा वाटर निकल के आता है इन दैट मैनर आल्सो इट वर्क्स सो इन द ड्राई सीजन वेन द रेन इज नॉट देयर सो इट प्रोवाइड्स द वाटर टू द ग्राउंड लेवल लेवल सो दैट वाटर टेबल इज आल्सो मेंटेन देन इट प्रोवाइड्स ओपन स्पेस एंड इनहेंस द प्रॉपर्टी वैल्यू बिकॉज ब्यूटिफिकेशन का काम भी करते हैं बिकॉज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑन दी वेटलैंड वी हैव मेनी माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स एंड सेकेंडली द इन्वायरमेंट और द सीनरी इज वेरी ब्यूटिफुल अराउंड दी वेटलैंड देन इट हेल्प्स द स्लो वाटर फ्लो एंड प्रिवेंट फ्लड्स ओके पानी की रफ्तार को भी धीमा करता है ताकि फ्लड भी ना आ सके एंड इट हैज डाइवर्स वाइबिलिटी ओके सो दीज आर समर दिनिफिट बिकॉज ऑफ विच वेटलैंड आर कॉल्ड दी किडनीज ऑफ द अर्थ एंड दे ऑल्सो वर्क फॉर कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन कैसे होता है because it has a very rich biodiversity very rich plants so they absorb the carbon from the atmosphere and give the oxygen so in this manner the carbon absorption from the atmosphere is done by the wetlands and carbon sequestration is also done and for that also they are very very important okay so guys here this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the content and do not forget to mention the answers of my questions in the comment section below okay as far as the comments are concerned so i remember last week in my video there was a comment of a student who was asking me to put these kinds of pictures in the daily pdfs or on the website i guess that was the question of that student so understand my friend that all of these informations cannot be provided in the pdf because these are the extra informations that build on your conceptual understanding they are not necessary for the exam okay since you are watching the video you may understand all these concepts but those people who are just reading the pdf or the people who read the pdf at the end of the time period they read the pdf just near the examination it becomes very hectic if you try to memorize or read everything therefore i try to put only the content which is relevant and which can be asked in the examination in your spotlight and on the website okay so i hope you are understanding and that makes the videos unique you need videos ki bhi apni usp hai that you get to know the extra information in the videos okay so how are wetlands important and how do they work as a kidney of the earth this might not be asked in your rbs ab or nabards phase 1 examination so why would i put such a picture and such a thing in the pdf okay so i hope that your doubt is clear and that's all thank you so much guys for watching the video